Hey guys, Avi here, and welcome back to our Swift series. In this video, we're gonna cover arrays in Swift. Now, let's say we're going shopping, okay? And we have our own shopping list, and I need to get a couple of fruits, bananas, apples, oranges, you know the deal. Now, one way I could do this is I could go ahead and create multiple variables. I could say var item one is equal to apples, okay? Var item two is equal to oranges, so on and so forth, and that would be my list of items. However, that's not very effective, it's not clean, we're writing a lot of code, creating a lot of variables, it doesn't make sense. So that's why arrays come into being. Arrays are basically a list of values that are of the same type, okay? So if all of, the th all, if all of our objects in a list were strings, okay? In this case, which they are, we could create a list of strings or an array of strings, okay? So let's go ahead and do that and then I'll explain how arrays work. So let's go ahead and just say var shopping list is equal to, and then what you do is you're gonna go ahead and create two square brackets, okay? So your square brackets are again um, with the curly braces, so just if you shift um, the curly braces, you'll get the square brackets, and in these you're gonna go ahead and create your shopping list. So I have three items, apples, oranges, and bananas, okay? And what's amazing about arrays is that all of your items are ordered. So that's the biggest thing about arrays is that if I want to access this first item, that's the first index in my array. And what I can do is I can say print out shopping list, shopping list, and then after shopping list is specify what index, I'm going to go ahead and say in square brackets zero. So that's one thing about arrays that you guys have to remember is that the indexing in arrays in almost every single programming language starts with zero. So this is item zero, this is item one, this is item two, and so on and so forth. Um, you guys are counting by one, two, three, four. However, in programming languages, all counting starts at zero, so you shift it down by one. So if I wanna get the first item on my list, apples, I say shopping list, and then in square brackets, zero. I get apples. If I wanna get the third item, I say three minus one in my head, and I say two. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, print shopping list two, bananas, there we go. Fantastic. So that's the gist of an array, okay? You create it with square brackets, you put a bunch of stuff in, that is your shopping list. Now my mom told me, hey, go ahead and get milk as well. So to add milk, I need to add a value, and that value is the append function. So shopping list dot, and then if you notice if you say dot, you see all these different functions, all these different things you can do. I'll go ahead and cover a few, but for now we're gonna do the first one up top, which is um, shopping list on append. And instead of saying contents of a sequence, just go ahead and say dot append and then milk, okay? So now if we print out shopping list, we're gonna go ahead and see over here, give it a few seconds to run, um, let's view it, and we see apples, oranges, banana, and then over here we have milk, fantastic. So that is our new shopping list, okay? We appended a value, and that's how you add new values to your shopping list. Now going back to our shopping list over here, let's go ahead and just print it out, and hit the dot key dot gives us a whole bunch of functions and one of the ones that I want to talk about is a count function. So shopping list count gives us how many values there are in the shopping list. So right now we get four and this is very effective when you want to iterate over something or if you want to figure out how many true values are there and then if you want to get the index of let's say the last value I could say shopping list right shopping list dot count minus one. So this will always get me the last value of my shopping list. But there has to be an easier way to get the first and last item in my list. And the way to do that is by saying shopping list dot first, okay? Shopping list dot first, that's actually getting me a string, so it's gonna be an error over here. So if I say shopping list dot first, I'll go ahead and get the first value in my array. And that should be apples. So let's give it a few seconds over here, okay? And now if I say shopping list dot last, I get the last value in my array shopping list, okay? So again, those are two very nifty features that Swift has. I'll go ahead and put the count back there. So these are again four different functions with arrays. We have append, we have count, we have first, and we have last. Now if you want to clear your shopping list, you can use the remove all function. So shopping list remove. if you want to remove a specific item, you can specify the location. Okay, we already have apples, I don't want to have any, any more apples. I'll go ahead and say remove at index zero. And that will remove apples from my list. So if I print out shopping list, I'll go ahead and see 
oranges, bananas, milk. Okay, give it a few seconds over here at the bottom and we should see oranges, bananas, and then milk. Great. And now if I go ahead and say shopping list dot remove all, I'll go ahead and remove every single item in my list and I'll have a blank list as, or a blank array as you can see over here. All right, fantastic. So we discussed the append, the count, the first, the last, the remove all function. And now I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to create an empty array. Let's just say that I wanna have an array and later on I'll get some values, I'll append to it, but I want the variable to exist as an empty array. So the way you do that is you say var new array and set this equal to your type in brackets. So I'm gonna make this an integer array, okay? So var new array is equal to in square brackets int, but I also have to specify these brackets after it. So var new array is equal to int. This creates a new integer type array. And I can go ahead and later on say new array dot append uh, five, new array dot append um, six, doesn't matter what. But this basically shows you how you can create a blank array, okay? If you don't have any values to initialize it with, you can always create a blank array and then append various values to it. All right, fantastic. Now, one last thing I wanna show you guys with arrays is that how do I change a value, okay? So let's say if I print out my new array right now, I'm gonna go ahead and get five and six, right? That's what it is. What if I wanna update the second value of my array to be 10 now? How do I do that? Well, just how we accessed and printed out the value, what you can do is you can say that whatever item is in the first position in my array, and remember, it's confusing, but first position refers to the second object in my array. So whatever object is in my first position, go ahead and set that value to be 10. So now if you go ahead and print out a new array, print new array, you're gonna go ahead and see five comma 10. Fantastic. So quick recap of arrays guys, they're very, very useful. In any sort of app you make, any sort of programming language you have, you will be using arrays somewhere, okay? The core concept is they're a list of items, right? You have the same type of items and you can append to it. So you have the append function. You have the count function, which tells you how many there are. First and last gets you the first and last items of your list or array. And the remove functions give you, hey, if you want to remove an item, you can remove it by a specific index or you can remove all of them. To create a blank array, you specify the type and then you just place empty parentheses after that and that will create a blank array for you. And you can go ahead and modify a specific item at a specific location in your array by specifying that location and updating the value. Anyways, thanks for so much for watching guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions, just let me know and I'll see you in the next video.